there are ways to increase the odds of a better bargain. Like bidding in a live auction for a first-class seat. So now I'm the top of the leaderboard. Learning when to pay with those loyalty points to avoid a premium price. You have status, I have nothing, but we're still sitting next to each other. <laughs> you said that with real joy. <laughs> Even gaming the system. Look at that, it's telling me you should book now. There are good deals and gimmicks vying for your attention. And that's why Las Vegas is the perfect place as we explore the price of flying. The most perishable commodity in the world at the moment is on this plane. An empty airline seat. Once those wheels lift off the ground, that empty seat can no longer be sold. Which is why setting airfares is a tricky business. It's been called the dark arts. For passengers like you and me, it's a mysterious process happening in the shadows. Ticket prices changing by the day, by the hour, sometimes by the minute. The wizardry behind it all, complex mathematical algorithms, driving the price changes, always calculating a traveler's next move. It's, it's rocket science. He's not kidding. Andy Boyd was the chief scientist at a company that supplies revenue management systems to major airlines around the world. Revenue management, or RevMan, is the constant tinkering of airfares, which has you paying top dollar for that coach seat, while your next door neighbor got a bargain. And revenue management is really fundamentally about looking at what the market's willing to pay. Airlines have decades of data on passengers' flying habits and buying behavior. It enables them to predict demand on any given flight. The computers do the work by themselves. Estimate what passengers you expect to show up. Use that in an algorithmic mix to figure out how you're going to set the different prices. You do a price check in the morning and it's X. By the afternoon, it's X plus Y. And you're thinking, why didn't I buy yesterday? It's infuriating. It, it is, and I get infuriated when it happens to me too. Those different prices or fair classes are known in the industry as buckets. So here's how revenue management works. Think of these balls as being the various seats on a particular plane. And the buckets are the different fair classes, this is the most expensive seat on the plane. Now, the airline knows it's not going to sell everything out of here. It redistributes some of those seats to some of the lower fare buckets. Right, and what's the difference between these various buckets? Change fees, you have to pay to get your bag on the plane. As the airline is selling seats, the buckets close without just selling them out, it can just choose to close them and put them in the higher fare bucket. So you literally just close out the buckets? Yes. Oh, wait, now the, now the demand is slowed down. We need to move some back down into the lower fare buckets again. Oh, too many people are showing up. You close, close down some of those buckets again, close them down, you need to get them back up here. Oh yes, and make sure you get some all the way up here because you don't want them in there. It's typically taking place all of the time. I do have to say, it's a lot easier with a computer. I would say that this is the fundamental competitive advantage that an airline can build. Sebastian Mikosh knows the importance of perfect pricing. He's the former chief executive of Lot Polish Airlines and now the chief executive of eSky, an online travel agency. Is there an occasion when you, as an airline, you see, you would rather have let the seat go empty than discount it. This is the holy grail you're, you're talking about. It's much better for an airline to let a, an empty seat fly than to discount it. Airlines can't afford to have passengers suddenly changing their buying behavior. If they do, 
it'll destroy the pricing model. Basically, um, the revenue management and the whole um, complicated universe of prices is very much based on the prediction of how customers are going to behave. We have seen how airlines use science and art to price the tickets. Now they want to raise even more money by auctioning off the upgrades. In true Las Vegas fashion, they're turning to gambling and inviting passengers to bid for the better seats.